ยโมตัสสะพระกวตาวอรหตาวสัมมาสัมปุทธัสสะเนโมตัสสะพระกวตาวอรหตาวสัมมาสัมปุทธัสสะเนโมตัสสะพระกวตาวอรหตาวสัมมาสัมปุทธัสสะ May my homage to the blessed one, to the worthy one, to the fully enlightened one. Very good evening, everyone, and very respectfully, dear venerable sirs around the globe, my friends in the Hamma, around the globe, especially our friends in Indonesia. Before sharing the knowledge related to the Buddhist happy life, I would like to express. My sincere thank to Brother Miki for inviting me to deliver deliver a Dharma talk for Buddhist Channel in in Indonesia. And as you all remember, in my previous talk, I shared about uh, why we are becoming. Uh, short-lived, ugly, and sick, and the reason is because the decline of morality, the decline of spirituality. When the entire humanity is declining, their own spirituality. Naturally, they will face encounter. A lot of calamities, a lot of issues in their life. So, what we are experiencing today is the result of our own action, of our own deed. So, this is the Buddhist philosophy: what goes around comes around. Human being having. Uh, being destroying, killing, stealing, involving in sexual misconduct, uh, so on and so forth. So we are experiencing everything because of our own deed. So today I will share with you a Buddhist perspective on happy lifestyle. Let me say this: Everything we are experiencing right now, including COVID-19, is the result of the way we live. So the lifestyle is about the way we live, and that is why I have selected this topic to share with you about Buddhist perspective: how to have a happy lifestyle. And what kinds of, you know, ingredients include in Buddhist lifestyle? And as you know, Buddhism is very broad, very profound, and very complicated. A topic to discuss to 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 cover within one hour. And but I'm trying my best uh, to share with you the teachings, uh, you know, theories. Which are practical and simple, and especially relevant to your day-to-day -day activities. Uh, yeah, yeah. Buddhism, everything in Buddhism is practical, but I will share the practical and simple techniques and the most relevant ones that you can apply, that you can integrate uh, for your life. Uh, before starting, I just remind you that there are many uh, discourses describing, relating about the holistic approach for happy lifestyle. Why I use the word holistic approach? It means 
it includes everything there. That is why I use the term, I use the word holistic approach for happy lifestyle. When we dissect the Mahamangala discourse, the Mahamangala Sutta, the 38 factors for auspicious life or, or for happy life, when you profoundly interpret from the first stanza until the final one, you can understand that every lifestyle which Buddha taught is there, starting from the social life, edu educational life, uh, professional life, and then family life religious life and the final one is spiritual life it means that in order to lead a very happy life a productive lifestyle you have to include everything into your life just having the family life social life professional life educational life is not enough. You have to add something into your life in order to remain happy and mentally stronger. That is religious life and spiritual life. So there are many discourses that, as I told you, uh, talking about the holy, uh, holistic approach for happy lifestyle. Like one is, another one is, we are Gopaja Sutta, and another one is Singhaluvada Sutta, and so on and so on. But just, just let me remind you what uh, Buddha taught in the We are Gopaja Sutta. There was a, a Brahmin, We are Gopaja, uh, he came to the Buddha and raised the question that, Dear, dear Venerable Sir, I am a householder enjoying everything, having a family, having kids. Do you have any kinds of teaching that, that I can benefit my life, that I can lead my life happily? So the Buddha gave eight conditions. So the four conditions is for the uh, how a household life and uh, another for uh, is uh, for the spiritual progress or the spiritual life. And I, I don't go into detail because we are not going to discuss about the discourse, but I want to share with you that Buddhism holds a very holistic approach or view uh, in terms of leading the happy, lives, uh, happy lifestyle. And then let me remind you another verse, and it is very famous one, it is very popular one. Arogya paramalaba santutti paramandhanang visasa paramanyati nibbanang paramang sukhan. The translation goes like this. Uh, Healthiness is the best gift, is the best uh, profit in life. Contentment or mental happiness or mental health is the ultimate gift. Uh, word in, uh, trustworthiness or the trusted friends are the relatives. And the final one, Nibbanang Paramang Sukhan. Enlightenment or uh, the final blissfulness is the greatest bliss. So this is the translation. So when you, uh, you know, carefully analyze the words, you can understand that there are four dimensions of life 
that Buddha recommended us to integrate into our life. Let me say it in simple words. First one is physical health. And the second one is mental health. And the third one is social health. And the final one is spiritual health. So the final one is the highest level that each and every one of us must reach, must accomplish spiritual health, the spirituality. Or in another term, you can say that phys uh, physical health and the second one is, I can say, the worldly happiness. Because in Buddhism, there are two kinds. There are many kinds of happiness in, in Anguttara Nikaya. But basically, there are two kinds of happiness. One is uh, worldly happiness, or we can say uh, mundane happiness. And another one is supramundane happiness. Uh, unworldly happiness so this is the most important and, and, and the foremost goal that every and single uh, of us must accomplish must reach that is the nirvana so bring bringing up the facts describing in different discourses to be honest, in order to let you know that in order to lead a very happy lifestyle you need a you need everything you need a holy you need a holistic aspect of life so before going describing uh, what is the happy lifestyle and what does and it includes i want to you to understand that if you want to be happy if you want to have a very happy lifestyle, you have to change the way of your life. You have to change the way of your life. You, you have to uh, create a new aspect of life. Just convince yourself that life is not about eating, uh, clothing, housing, medicine, and so on it's beyond that that is i want to say when human beings understand that life is not about only food you know clothing housing medicine and so, and so on the hu the entire humanity will be at ease will be in happiness will be in security uh, uh, insecurity that is why we want to share with you. Okay, so before uh, going, you know, more detail about uh, the approaches for the happy lifestyle, let me tell you a, a story for you to understand about a Buddhist perspective about happy lifestyle. Yeah, there was a village and there are many families living there and but there is a family uh, but only wife and husband they're living together and unfortunately as you know we have to die so one day the husband passed away uh, due to some reason he passed away and when the time passed by the wife was missing him missing the husband so she she decided to meet the fortune teller uh, to ask him what happened to his husband, uh, to her husband, and to talk with her, her husband. So, you know, there are some astro astro uh, astrologers or fort fortune tellers have the ability to connect themselves with the spirits or with the uh, 
uh, ones who pass away. Okay, so she went to the fortune teller and started telling him about her husband. Then, then yeah, the fortune teller used some technique and brought back uh, her her husband. It means that he let the spirit of her husband enter his body. So they started talking. Then the wife asked, how are you? Then the husband said, I'm fine. How about the food? Everything is great. And then, okay, so how about the housing? Okay, I, I have it and it's very comfortable. It's fine, everything is fine. And then how about making friends? Oh, they are very friendly. I lot have, have, I have a lot of friends. Okay, so to her, to her surprise, because when, you know, she started talking to herself, thinking that this man, when he was living with me, he doesn't do anything. Squaring, drinking, you know, bad behavior, never getting with people, always, you know, scolding, scoring with everyone, even with his friends. So how can he be in such a lifestyle? He has everything, food, housing, good friends. Then she started asking again. Uh, in what heaven, in which heaven are you? <laughs> okay, in which heaven are you? And the man said, no, no, I'm, I'm not in heaven. So the, the lady, I mean, the, the grandpa, the word the grandpa, started asking again, where the hell you are? <laughs> uh, he replied, no, I am. I am a rabbit. <laughs> I am born as a rabbit. So rabbit has everything. You know, the food because the grass are there and housing, trees, you know, and he has many friends. So the, I mean, the, pers the purpose of telling this story, I want you to know that just having enough food or just eating or clothing or housing or just having friends is not the purpose of life animals have that and there are many you know lucky animals or fortunate animals you know even the dogs and the cats you know, are raised by royal families or, uh, you know, the actors, actress living in a very comfort zone. So there are many animals. They has everything, but that is not the life. This is not life according to Buddhist perspective. So I will share with you today. So According to Buddhist perspective, so I, I bring it up everything from the discourses uh, to share with you uh, about the happy lifestyle. And hopefully in future we will talk in more detail, uh, hopefully uh, next time we talk. So happy lifestyle includes, okay, one is physically healthy lifestyle. First one is physically healthy lifestyle. Second one is a mentally healthy lifestyle, healthy lifestyle. And the third one is socially healthy lifestyle. And the final one is spiritually healthy lifestyle. 
So there are four dimensions of happy lifestyle. Okay, let me remind you. First one is physical health. Second one is mental health. And the third one is social health. And the final one is spiritual health. Buddhism discusses everything about this. And you know, each uh, dimension can be divided into many aspects in a, in many ways, but uh, because of the time restraint, let us briefly discuss it. And and you can uh, find more from the scriptures, from uh, you know different uh, dharma talks. So let us go to the physically healthy lifestyle. As I told you earlier, to survive as human being, we need the food, we need cloth, uh, uh, we need uh, house, and we need medicine. So it, this is called the basic requisites the four basic requisites in Buddhism, we call it. And monks also need that. And as human beings, you, you also need it. Uh, so food, clothes, housing, and medicine. But, but when you learn to eat your food as your medicine, you will be healthy. That, that, is, that is the point that I want to address. When you mindfully and carefully consume what you have earned, your life will be at ease, your, your, your life will be happy. Okay, so for example, food. So according to Buddhism, we must consume, we must uh, use these four mindfully or with with the right understanding with the right view first one food that is why buddha said matanyuta jabhatasmi moderation in eating in simple sentence i would say eat enough not eat too much eat enough not eat too much so this is the buddhist recommendation because we are sometimes very greedy to 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 the you know uh, flavor uh, to to the taste or to different kind different kinds of food and you know what happened obesity different kinds of diseases you will experience you will suffer from. That is why the first step to be taken by you is mindfully consume your food. In Buddhism, we say eat enough, not too much. And and when when we eat, okay, or when we when we are taking breakfast or when or when we are taking lunch or when we are taking dinner, we are advised to do it mindfully or with right reflection or with right attitudes. It means that we are eating or we are having breakfast or lunch or dinner for the sake of our body, just for living, not, you know, not, uh, not living to eat. Uh, we eat for living we eat to survive so when we keep practicing with these kinds of right attitudes our greediness will reduce so the benefit is you will become physically healthy because you don't you are not the slave of your own tongue 
you control your time. That is why you are becoming physically healthy. So this is one aspect. And another aspect is uh, after eating, according, according to a Buddhist uh, philosophy, we are recommended to do a walking meditation. If after every and each meal, you must walk. And according to the medical researchers, we are not allowed to sit or uh, lying down after having having meal because it disturbs uh, our digestive system okay so according to buddhism after having meal we are recommended to to have a walking meditation and there and that is why there are five benefits of walking meditation let you let me remind you the first one is the the meditator who practices walking meditation benefits the the ability to walk for long distance so it means that your body is is strong that is why you can walk long distance without uh, being tired okay and the second one is uh, the meditator who, practice, who, who practices walking meditation will experience the great tolerance or endurance. It means that you will, have, you will have the ability to engage in any kinds of activities with patience, with tolerance, with endurance. That you, I mean, you can bear more than others. And that is why as meditators, we are advised to practice walking meditation because it helps us to sit longer and longer because uh, it develops our endurance our tolerance to remain calm to remain uh, non-reactive to any kinds of pain uh, you know uh, occurring in our uh, you know different parts uh, uh, of the body uh, and the third one is, uh, you will be fr you will be free from uh, diseases, illnesses. And the fourth one is, your digestive system will be very healthy. And the final one is, your concentration will develop. So these are the five the benefits of practicing walking meditation. So let me remind you again, uh, out of five, I want to bring your, your attention to the trees, uh, which are, you know, beneficial and uh, very uh, helpful to remain physically healthy. Okay, you will build up a, a physical ability to walk for long distance, physically healthy. If you are not physically healthy, you cannot walk very long distance. And you will be free from Ill, different kinds of illnesses. And the final one is your digestive system will be healthy. You know, because so many people so many people around the world are suffering you know from gastritis because many reasons for that according to the medical researchers because the food we consume are not digested properly or another reason is we eat and we do not eat uh, as advised by the doctors. According to medical researchers, we are not allowed to having dinner after seven or eight o'clock. You know, because there is a reason. If you having dinner 
after seven or eight, the meal you consume will not be digested properly. Because according to the medical researchers, they say they said that your digestive system doesn't work uh, or, or they are having rest after eight o'clock or seven o'clock. So it is very understandable that the the benefits or, or the advantages of observing the eight precepts or ten precepts, like monks, like nuns. So monks and nuns are, are not having a heavy, I use it sometimes heavy food, but not having dinner. We are allowed only having a soft drink. So in today society fasting is so much popular a lot popular fasting helps a lot to heal your digestive system and you know people spend thousands of dollars to attend the course to learn how to do the fasting <laughs> but it's very simple when you train to observe eight precepts or or ten precepts your body will be used to that and one hand it will be i mean on on one hand it will be useful for your physical health on the other hand it will be useful for your spiritual health so one in two so when you learn to observe the precepts you will be benefited not only the physical health but the spiritual health so there are many you know, thing to be discussed, to be elaborated uh, in, in, in the context of physically healthy lifestyle, but let me stop here. Uh, we move to the mentally uh, happy lifestyle. Uh, okay, so here I would like you to understand that how to remain happy has you know householders because even because uh, you are not man you are not none uh, you are having family you are having kids so much responsibility so how to remain happy how to live your life uh, with happiness so this point is very important mentally happy lifestyle here i would like you i would like to rec uh, recommend you to practice the 10 merit stories deeds in buddhism okay starting from dana but i don't uh, describe all uh, let me uh, share share a few uh, of them. So according to remain happy, first you have to understand what is the meaning of punya, what is the meaning of merit in Buddhism. Okay, merit in Buddhism is is a device. I call it a device or entity that uh, cleanses your mind or purifies your mind and how does it purify that is you have to understand for example uh, our mind is you know perturbed our mind is 
you know, uh, uh, our mind is is blurred by the we call it the stinginess, okay, stinginess, or greediness, or covetousness. Everyone mind, including monks, if if you don't practice. So our mind is uh, in, uh, uh, impure. Our mind is impure uh, because of greediness, covetousness, uh, or stinginess. So when we practice generosity or sharing or giving, our mind will be purified by generosity. It means generosity, I mean the intention of generosity or being generous will replace the stinginess. And that is why punya or merit is defined as the entity cleansing the mind. So, so to remain happy, I mean, that, that I mean at the beginning, that's why I told you just, you know, eating, having, just having family, housing or cars, it's not enough. You have to cultivate some mental qualities which make you happy. So in order to make you happy, you learn to share, you learn to give. I'm not saying that you must give everything to the monks or to the nuns. No, it's not about that. Giving or sharing or generosity can be practiced to anyone according to Buddhist philosophy. So just do what makes you happy. That is why in, in Mahamangala Sutta, uh, the discourse describing about the 38 factors uh, for uh, uh, auspicious life. Uh, there, is a, there is a verse, there is a stanza. Dhanang dhananja dhamacharyaja nyataka nanja sangho or mata pitu upatthanang like that. So giving or sharing or uh, hospitality or treatment to the relatives. It's meaning that you can share with everyone or you can share even with your family. You can share what you have even with your friends, with your relatives. So it reflects uh, your mental well being that you learn to give. Because sting, uh, stinginess or covetousness, greediness make you suffer. Uh, it's, uh, uh, it is, you know, impure your mind, make your mind dirty. So when your mind is full of dirtiness, including stinginess, you can be happy according to Buddhism. So that is why uh, uh, if you want to be happy, you must learn to share, you must learn to give. So giving is not about, you know, uh, money, or goods, or food. It's not only about, it's not, it's not only about that. It's more than that, because that is, that there is a story uh, among who went for arms round and, uh, and a beggar and I think you know that there is a conversation between them and the monk went for arms round, went for begging and uh, met a poor, yeah, met, met a beggar and the monk stopped there. The beggar started talking, telling the monk that I have nothing to give you, I'm poor. And the monk replied back, you are not poor. And the beggar said, I am poor, you see, I have nothing. The monk started asking again, may I ask you some questions? Yes, sure. Do you have mouth? The beggar said, yes. You can smile. 
So this is kinds of giving. Uh, the story is quite long, and the monks, the monks ask, "You have hands, you have legs. It means you can render your services. You can help someone. You can clean uh, the temple. You can clean the road. You can do something with your two hands and with your two legs." So, what I want to say here. Giving or sharing is not only food, you know, cloth or house or car or simply the materiality. You can share your smile to make someone happy, to make someone day uh, full of refresh. And another sharing is dharma sharing, like. Uh, Buddhist channel is doing, we can share that. So the most important thing is our intention. We want, we want someone to be happy. We want someone to be benefited. Uh, you know, from our action, we do it out of compassion. We do it uh, out of full understanding. So this is sharing. Uh, and so to be uh, mentally happy you have to do more and you have to learn how to manage your stress you learn how to manage your anger and there are so many but uh, for a household life uh, giving is the best way to practice giving is the best way to practice to make you happy but let me remind you, you must give, you must share with happiness. You do it with, with understanding and don't focus on the amount of the money or amount of food you give. You must focus on your intention. You must focus on your understanding. You must focus on your compassion. Because there are many stories in, in Buddhist scripture. Mm, there is a man, he wanted to offer a flower to the Buddha. And, but unfortunately, the king uh, uh, collecting, uh, the king uh, have collected all the flowers because he is a powerful man in, in the country. But anyway, he went to the you know, a flower garden or, or where, where, where the farmers are planting the flowers and he went there and the farmers told him not, not to enter the park because the flowers were collected, were, uh, you know, taken uh, by the royal officers. But he said, it's okay, I, I, will, I will go and, and search. So, you know, uh, fortunately, he found eight flowers uh, falling down on the grass. So he picked up the eight flowers and, and show them to the farmers. Uh, Dear friend, I, I found eight flowers. And, and then because the confidence, because of the faithfulness towards the Buddha, the man didn't take the flowers without giving money to the farmer. The man gave the money to the farmers and the farmer said, no, no, I don't need, I, I don't want because uh, they are not real flowers because they have fallen down on the ground. The man said, no, you, you must accept. Anyway, the, the man just put the money uh, somewhere and he took the flowers and offered to the Buddha and according to the scripture he was born in heaven so from the story what I want to tell you is intention is very important are you happy I mean for doing that is your intention is pure is your intention is uh, you know 
uh, we call it uh, is is your intention is calm or pure so this this is the question you ask yourself and you must train your, yourself every day whatever you do not not only not only giving so uh, as you know there are i mean uh, the 10 uh, basis of meritorious deeds and in future, i mean hopefully in future we can share about that how how to uh, do or uh, practice or accumulate merits uh, uh, full of uh, betterment uh, from a psychological point of view. And another one let me share is respectfulness. So when you learn to respect someone, you learn to respect to your father, you learn to respect to your mom, your wife, your husband, your daughter, so your teacher uh, will make you mentally stronger because you cultivate something from within respectfulness respectfulness replaces the arrogance or replaces the the deceit or or, or i call it super ego or being uh, big headed you learn to respect this is very important so when you practice more and more the, the 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 respectfulness you will become mentally stronger so because of the time restraint uh, let me move to the social uh, health or socially um, uh, healthy lifestyle but i don't talk it uh, you know in detail because i i want to share with you the spiritually healthy lifestyle uh, lifestyle so socially, a happy lifestyle is about how you keep your uh, interperson uh, inter uh, personal relationships. I mean, you must fulfill your responsibility full of respect, full of accountability. If you are a husband, you must be a good husband. If you are a wife, if you are a daughter, if you are a boss, if you are a politician, whoever you are, when you are living in a society, if you want to remain socially healthy, you must maintain your relationship in a very productive way. It means you must do your responsibility out of compassion. You must do your best for the sake of everyone around you. If you are a teacher, you, your, your intention is to make your students smart. You are paid, it's okay, it's all right, but don't focus, not only focus on the money, but you focus on sharing, uh, sharing the knowledge. And for more detail, you can refer to the Singalova, the Sutta. And because there are responsibilities, duties between the wife and husband, uh, you know, children and parents. So you can uh, refer to it. So what I want to say is uh, Buddhist lifestyle, Buddhist happy lifestyle includes everything. That is my point. So we don't go into detail today. And the final one is spiritually healthy lifestyle. I think the final one is the most important uh, aspect that we must integrate into our life. You know why? Because everyone is suffering. Because they don't have spirituality they don't know how to practice, uh, you know, spirituality. They don't know how to uh, boost their spirituality. And they are in a big darkness. Or oh, whether, uh, I mean, why we should need spirituality. 
That is why there are many suicidal attempts, suicides, depression, people suffer from depression, anxiety, simply the mental disorders or mental diseases because they don't know the way to control their mind. So this is, I call it spirituality. And even we haven't reached the enlightenment, but progress in spirituality is important. You know, especially the COVID-19. There are many people are suffering from different mental diseases, worrying, lose, losing expectation, depression, anxiety, you know, fear, a, a lot of, you know, mental calamities people are, are, are experiencing. So, so today I'm not sharing the technique how to develop it. I may share it in, in, in future talk, but I want to say these uh, mental faculties are you know, the element, ingredients to develop your spirituality. You must develop these mental faculties if you, if you want to be, uh, you know, spiritually happy. And first one is, I use it, imperturbability. Imperturbability. In Buddhism, we use it. Upeka. In uh, Mangala Sutta, you can refer to it. Puthasalo Kadamehi Chittang Yasana Kampati. It means that when we learn, when we learn, when we train our mind not to be shaken, move, or uh, perturbed by the external circumstances, external calamities, external criticism, external problems. Buddha said, we are the winner. We are the winner. So that is why we are recommended to practice imperturbability. This is the ability not to be depressed, not to be afraid of not to be shaken not to be moved when something happened in your life for example covid 19. here here we train our mind to remain calm or we train our mind to remain equanimous we call it equanimity we train our mind to remain equanimous or you know, the popular term is we train our mind to remain non-reactive to whatever happened or remain calm. So according to Buddhist perspective, by nature, you know, it is common, it is normal, it is natural that we have to face ups and downs in life. We call it uh, Attaloka Dhamma, uh, the eight worldly conditions, eight worldly conditions. Everyone in the world, even including the Buddha, must encounter this. Must encounter this. Lab, alab, ayasa, yasa, and so on. It's mean that again and again, sometimes we we will have what we are planning for and sometimes no this is life sometimes happiness sometimes sadness sometimes we are given a lot of compliments we are praised we are highly appreciated sometimes but sometimes we are insulted we are condemned we are criticized we are blamed and sometimes we are surrounded by thousand billion of people, many friends, 
Sometimes no one, we are alone. So what I want to, this is life. Life is a fluctuation, ups and downs, ups and downs. You cannot expect everything to be perfect every day. Even your wife, even your husband, even your child. Sometimes even monk. So this is this is you have to this is. I mean this mental quality that this mental faculty or this mental quality must be developed, must be cultivated, if you want to remain spiritually happy. You know why? Even the entire world is in destruction. Is in. Uh, chaos you will remain okay because you have trained your mind to be a uh, to remain equanimous to remain imperturbed that is why we call it imperturbability so there are many mental uh, mental uh, faculties that we that we should develop so uh, but let me end today and we will share more uh, about the technique but today i just i just bring up the idea how to lead a very a happy lifestyle according to buddhism and i did not talk it in, into detail and you know that because it's very broad when it comes to the men uh, physical health when it comes to the mental health when it comes to the social health when it comes to the spiritual health uh, it might take a few talks uh, to finish but today i just share with you that life is not about having only food clothes housing and medicine so on and so forth you must if you want to be happy that that is the issue if you want to be to be happy if you want to to have a very good lifestyle full of you know refreshment full of positivity uh, full of optimism uh, full of kindness full of compassion you have to bring all the aspects into your life not only the money but your physical health your mental health your social your social health and your spiritual health so thank you and finally if any shortcomings during my talk i am seeking your apology and by the merits we have gained today wish everyone uh, a longevity uh, happiness and all the success in your life by the power of merits we have gained today May you all be well and happy. Let us share our merits with our, with our departed ones. May they all be well and happy. May everyone in the world be well and happy and free from suffering. Satu, satu, satu. Thank you very much.